guys, VBad here with another V plays, and there's a deal going on right now, and I figured we should probably be talking about it. Uh, first of all, August deals, we'll talk about this real quick. Uh, there's a bunch of planes that are relatively rare coming out right now, uh, but you have a bit of time. Uh, so we scroll back up to the top. You have until 1 September, so you got a month to, to decide what you really want to do here, but what i'm going to showcase for you is that there is an option to pick up the jl1 and the f15c and the la11 uh, these are high price point but you are getting a bunch of unique and supply crates along with it so it's i don't want to call it a discount per se but it's kind of a discount so this would this is essentially what you'd get for tier a premium anyways about 60 bucks so the la11 don't necessarily recommend it i think that it's an interesting plane but it may have outlived its usefulness when it comes to the other aircraft that are available nowadays we also have the xf15c very unique i don't think i've really seen this for sale very often it's essentially like a weird cross between a corsair's guns mixed with i want to say more like a Mustang's altitude and speed performance, but again, you're going to be sacrificing some maneuverability for that as well. Then the JL-1. This one is a Chinese aircraft, so it's hard to recommend it as a crew trainer because it's not a crew trainer. There isn't anything in the Chinese line except for premium, so you can't use it to train any crews, but it is going to be a credit earner. It's essentially going to be a premium version of the MiG-15 at tier 8. It has the combination of two 23mm cannons with a 37mm cannon as well to get that big chunk damage. It's more of a burst damage type of a platform, but you know, if you've always wondered what it was like to fly this plane, I will be doing a video of that. Uh, but for right now, I wanted to showcase the other thing that's a little bit more time sensitive, and that's gonna be the Wargaming birthday event, is selling the female pilots. These come up every so often, and some people ask me, you know, what, which one's the best one to grab? Honestly, for my money, I play mostly multi roles so as a multi-role pilot mary loveheart is perfect because she has a unique set of skills and i actually have this pi oh sorry goulash doing the video at the moment i'm going to deny but i will message you in a second so mary loveheart has a unique set of skills that are automatically applied there's a little bit of a double-edged sword here because you're essentially sacrificing five points right off the bat but they also give you another two as well right off the bat as well so you could theoretically have you know these two skills and then grab one of these other skills as well so what is this uh kind of laced up high heel with the wings on it the eagle wings will increase the engine thrust by two percent much like engine guru one would normally give you but it also increased the boost duration by ten percent that is pretty cool because you're not just getting the normal increase, but you're getting a bonus increase as well. So that's something to bear in mind. This Valkyrie's Wrath is an amazing skill because what it gives you is your rockets and bombs, uh, when released in a high dive angle at high speed, do double damage to ground targets. So that's double your money on the ammunition payload that you're carrying. So that's a big deal. It doesn't increase the blast radius, just the damage. So bear that in mind. And it's built for the P-47 Bravo when you first get her, but you can retrain her for any aircraft. Now, the I've talked about this before, and we'll talk about it again. In order to get this to activate, you have to be at a dive angle steeper than 45 degrees, and you have to accelerate close to... I think it's uh it's at 80 percent of your max speed but it'll trigger and even if you don't get the weird little valve noise it sounds like a valve opening and that will light up on your hud it isn't working the actual actuation sound but i can assure you that it is activating and it will stay active all the way up to negative two degrees of dive so once it's active you can actually start to lift the nose up and still get the effect 
So if you're making kind of a steep dive on target, you can drop on the first set of targets, kind of level off a little bit, maybe fire some rockets and then proceed on. That's why I put it on my F-84F crew because now I can get the maximum potential out of the Tiny Tims and the 12 rockets. And I can also try and roll for increased reload speed once I specialize the platform. And then of course, if you combine that with Demo Expert, you're getting even more from it. So there's a lot of potential coming from Mary Loveheart. No matter what multi-role you put her onto, as long as she is running with an air-to-ground focus. Now, there is another female pilot I highly recommend. It's hard for me to re recommend Charlotte. Charlotte's skills are a little bit weird, and we can talk about that, but it's a, it's a little bit tricky. Uh, yeah, I was right. Two free skills available. It's going to be Marina Lit... Lit... Yeah, Lit... Yeah, Litviakova, Litviakova, sorry, I actually had to look that up and go into pronunciations.com, but Marina Litviakova, she has some really cool skills and we have her pulled up as well. I put her in my IL-40 and her skills, this one's a little bit weird, Supernova increases the damage caused by bombs and rockets and their blast radius and their blast radius, so you're getting more than your typical demo expert here, by 15%. But a weird one is, if the aircraft is destroyed by collision with terrain or a ground target, the aircraft explodes and deals the damage of the affected area equal to double the maximum number of hit points of the aircraft. So what that means is she's essentially like a kamikaze platform if she hits the ground. So I wouldn't... I've never done this intentionally because you're actually going to negate some of the capture points anyways. But if you're in a pinch, you could theoretically drop the aircraft into the center of the mine and potentially destroy that whole section. I've never tested it, though, because it seems a little bit crazy. I'm happy with the 15% bonus, not only to the damage, but also to the blast radius of the munitions. That really gives you a bit. Additionally, Femme Fatale is awesome because it will set... Ground targets on fire as a result of continuous shooting with the forward firing guns. With the IL-40, you get six 23mm cannons, so you're able to chunk out a lot of damage in quick, succe quick succession, which means that if you're sustained shooting at an armored target, chances are you're going to light it on fire. Once you've lit an armored structure on fire on the ground, it will blow up. It's just going to be a matter of time as it ticks away on the health, so you can really let loose with it. Now, of course, uh, I went with Protection Expert because I wanted to potentially be able to get more out of the Supernova if I do end up doing a Kamikaze dive into the ground. So there is some neat capabilities that come from these two pilots. And for sake of discussion, we'll throw up Charlotte on here. I think I have her on my Tier 10. Yeah, Tier 10. There she is. So Charlotte, it's a little bit unique because she's got this dazzling star skill. It's only a one point skill, but it increases the range that enemy aircraft are detected by 40% and the range at which your aircraft is detected by enemies by 10%. So you're actually vis more visible by 10%, but you get 40% to be able to see them. So it's kind of nice because you can almost act as like a spotter for the rest of your team but it also makes you a little bit more of a target yourself. Now, she's originally meant to be on the BF-110E, but uh, I felt like it would be worthwhile to throw her on the Tier 10 because of this skill, because we lose the air-to-air -air rockets with the Tier 10. But Celestial Fury, in a head-on attack, the pilot fires at the most vulnerable sections of an enemy aircraft, whatever that means. But it improves the chance of getting critical damage to an enemy aircraft and setting it on fire and increases the damage on a head-on attack by 20%. That means that if we're playing chicken with somebody and we're unloading with these 30 millimeter cannons, we're going to be doing more damage in the head-on. So while we've gotten used to our 262 and our 262 HG2 having the R4M rockets to kind of augment our ability to be able to kill people in a forward hemisphere, we lose that at tier 10. Now I kind of get to play with that a little bit more, but really it's hard to gauge the effectiveness of the dazzling star without having somebody else on your team being like oh i'm so glad you were there to be able to spot all those bombers and stuff it's just it's hard to validate that because we don't really have a good sense of how the spotting mechanics work or at least i don't and then celestial fury it's 
debatable on how effective that's going to be. But we know Valkyrie's Wrath is going to be huge for a multi-role, and we know that Supernova and Femme Fatale for Litviakova, huh? uh, that that's going to be an amazing skill for a Soviet ground pounder. So with all that said, uh, it depends on what you like to play. I really like Mary Loveheart. I think that it's a very solid pick for, for if you're going to pick up one of these female pilots. But I also think that Lit Litviakova, huh? Marina Litviakova, she is awesome if you're a big ground pound player. If you love your Soviet ground attack aircraft, I don't think you can go wrong with her. Uh, she will benefit more from an, one of the aircraft that has more sustained fire aircraft like i don't think an il-20 with its 57s is necessarily going to benefit from her skill of femme fatale as much she's probably going to be better off in the il-40 or the il-40p but that's fair i think if you're going to grab one of these pilots putting them in your tier 9 or tier 10 is going to be a really safe bet so there's a lot to be said for that i, I think that they're they're interesting picks and i'm glad that they're selling them again they're not too high of a price point but even still you now you know what you're missing if you're not picking them picking them up i don't think they're game breaking in their capabilities but i also think that if you're interested in picking them up it's glad i'm glad that they're available so that way people like me aren't getting an unfair advantage because they were only available during the earlier phases of the games 2.0 release so with that said you guys have until the 10th to decide if you want to pick them up or not uh, choice is yours, obviously. I'm not telling you how to spend your money, but if you were planning on picking one of them up, now you can make a more educated decision. So no gameplay today, but hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Like a soldier, soldier.